Hello everybody, welcome back to Space Pickle Designs. Today I have a really laid back, easy video for you. Um, we're going to start off with a little bit of a show and tell, kind of like what I've been up to, what's been really taking my time on the beading mat. As you can see here, it's this guy. Um, and then I'm looking to do a simple tutorial with uh, Jesse James Beads, the box. Um, and this is going to be like a no-brainer. This is a very on-trend style necklace. Um, that we're going to make, and I'll show you some pictures of that. Um, but I just thought that, you know, an easy Monday, we need to have a couple wins, you know, to start out the week. So we're just going to start off with a really, really super easy tutorial. All right, so let's get started. All right, so you've probably seen this guy before. Um, she's uh, probably changed a little bit since you last saw her, but this was going to be my entry for last year's Air Force art contest. And this is just the French beading bead embroidery piece right here. And it was gonna be fully bead embroidered and backed and put into a necklace form. And now keep in mind, this is definitely an art piece because this thing is super heavy. All the flowers here were made with wire and they're a little bit misshapen just because I'm still working on her. Um, but, if you can see back here, like this is what we're working with in the back, right? So there's a ton, a ton of wire. You can probably see all the stitching that's already occurred here. And um, I was gonna enter it in for this year's Air Force Art Contest, which is due tomorrow. However, you see that's not gonna be possible. And, you know, I really stressed about it because I set these like goals for myself that are oftentimes um, unnecessary. Um, and instead of really like enjoying this work, it was more of like, I need to get this done to feel productive. And I decided today that I'm not gonna try to rush it and that I'm gonna take my time and maybe I'll enter it next year. But in order to make myself feel a little bit better about that, um, Cause I really feel like um, I'm really, I'm kind of hard on myself when it comes to this type of thing. But I started this hobby because it's supposed to be fun, right? It's supposed to be something that helps me relax and I think unnecessarily putting deadlines and in, in such um, can kind of take away from that. And so I'm going to pass up this year and I'm not going to enter this year and we'll just look forward to next year. Um, the, the ops tempo at my work has been, um, pretty insane, uh, the past half a year, probably, well, you know, probably with this whole assignment. So, um, I've been in this assignment for a year and a half and it's just, you know, it's just one of those things where it's, um, a labor of love, but a lot of times it cuts into family time and hobby time. And so... We're just here today to talk about beads and relax and prioritize our mental health over some unnecessary goals that we place for ourselves and let's just relax and have a good time. So I just wanted to show you this because it is a very like dimensional piece as you can see here. And so, you know, the tulips, they're very far off the um, felt here. And they all have like a little surprise inside. There's beads on beads on beads. And so I have done the border, a lot of the border. I've included lots of different types of beads. Um, I have did some twisted bugles here to kind of catch the light um, and to mimic like different colors of the grass. And here I've actually mimicked a, a grass um, feel. And so that kind of helps fill in those gaps. And so my goal is, to fill in all the felt gaps here with beads. And I wanted it to be just full of flowers. I know that we're missing um, leaves, but I wanted it to be a bouquet of flowers and not necessarily leaves. So uh, my solution has been to use peanut beads. And so I got a bunch of peanut beads from Laura McCabe's shop. And um, if you can see here, I'll try to zoom in a little bit more. And so let's see if you can see that. So all of these beads underneath here, and they're different uh, color, colors of peanut beads. And so there's obviously there's some check beads here as well um, to add to the flora, right? Um, 
but most of it is peanut beads and I really think that like from a distance it gives a really nice full feel but also like it could be little buds of flowers and so yeah to include so I made clusters of chuck glass right using wire techniques and I've used a big focal here obviously and some big ones over here but I did want to showcase like the handicraft and not just use only um, pre-manufactured beads. And so that's the direction I'm going. I'm just gonna chip away at it a little at a time and we're gonna get it done when we get it done. I think the biggest challenge for me is going to be um, making a chain for it or whatever I decide to use as the necklace material. This thing is already heavy as it is. I don't fully, I fully don't expect anyone to actually wear this. This is not really a wearable piece um, unless it's for like display or for art or for photograph or whatever. Um, so the weight is not too um, discerning to me. It's more about the balance between this hefty, hefty piece here and the stringing material that it's on. I feel like it will need to be wide when it, where it attaches right here. So wide on those areas, right? And then maybe tapers off. And I think having it closer to the neck um, and not necessarily resting down on the bust chest area is going to help with that a little bit and it might help offset some of that weight just in case somebody decides to take her out for a spin for a special date night or whatever, right? So. Whoever wears this, I don't know if it'll be me, might be me, who knows. Um, but whoever decides that they're going to wear this is going to definitely be the talk of the town that night because this is insane. I do plan on putting a lot of Swarovski crystals throughout just to add to a shine factor. Because as you can see, this crystal in here is shining. And I don't necessarily want the crystal to be like in your face, but like hiding crystals throughout uh, near near the felt itself and not actually on the flowers I think will provide a nice visual interest when you're wearing it and so we'll see how it turns out um you know uh with these type of art projects it's just a lot of times you feel like it's going nowhere until the very end and then it turns into something great and so I like that challenge I like the uncertainty but it definitely is um it is a little stressful um, because this piece alone, tens and tens of hours, if not a hundred hours already put into this because, I mean, you have to string all the seed beads onto the wire before you even make the French beaded flowers. You have to make the cluster of flowers. I mean, it's just an insane amount of work, um, but pushing boundaries uh, for what, you know, bead artistry can be is um, fun to me. So let me know if you guys uh, do art projects like this. I'm sure I'm not the only one. I'm sure we all love a challenge when it comes to this type of thing, but that's not what today's video is about. Today's video is about the opposite spectrum. So I wanted to show you like the crazy stressful spectrum here, right? And I'm going to put her aside. We haven't named her yet. I'm still looking for names. So if you have any ideas, please feel free to comment. A name for that project because uh, she deserves a name she's definitely a named piece we've we've dedicated enough time for her to be a named piece so let me know what your thoughts are so I've never received Jesse James beads box before and if you've seen my unboxing video you know that like I received one for the first time and I think a lot of us in the bead community were lucky to receive one this month um, however I always see these bead strands and a lot of bead weaver or not bead weavers but bead artists on YouTube take them apart and I feel like like they do such a great job with taking them apart and using um, pieces from them to make their own thing but I think what I want to do just to kick off this box because it's such a lovely box is that we're gonna just do the easy thing you know I think Today is all about winning. So let's let's do that. So what I have in mind, the only thing that I feel like I'm going to change may be these bead caps. And I will zoom you in to show you. These, 
I'm not sure what it is. It's not sitting right with my soul when I'm looking at it. Um, and I think they can be used in another project somewhere. So what I have done is I have taken my big old organizer full of gold bead caps and we're going to look to replace it. So we're not going to get the same vibe because these are like filigree, right? Um, but we're going to see what we can do with using what we got here. And I'm thinking, you know, these are, this is a good option here. I think those look pretty good, but we'll play around with it and see what we think. So the style of necklace that I chose to do is um, this front closure. And I don't know what these types of closure, these are, this is like a spring ring closure. However, it's very large. And so you can buy these at Michael's, but I bought this particular set on BB Craft. Actually, BB Craft was kind enough to send this to me. And so in this package, I got, I think, three different sizes. And so I'm going to use the largest size because I want it to be a focal piece. And so um, I'll go ahead and pop some of the inspiration pictures on the screen now. Um, but while you're looking at those pictures, just know like this was inspired by K-pop. For me in particular because this is that's the type of uh environment that i saw this type of necklace first and so i've seen the spring ring and i was inspired also by it being a uh asymmetric necklace and so one side is going to be the butterfly strand and this is going to be a short necklace this is meant to be a little longer than a choker Right? So we don't want the necklace to rest on the neck. We want it to rest right in the divot between the neck and the clavicle. And so you'll see one side is going to be the butterflies. And I haven't decided. Normally the opposite side is just pearls. And so I pulled out some pearls initially. The first one I pulled out, I want a chunkier pearl. So I'm looking at an 8 or a 10. And I believe that these are, those are 8, I believe. Let me see. Yeah, they're an eight. So we have this color and it, it's very matchy matchy. Like it's too much of the same vibe for me. Um, so then I pulled out, because I wanted to use pearls. I pulled out this purple strand and lo and behold, there's no purple in the entire strand. I still think it goes because I there's jewel tones, right? So there's jewel tones on the side here. There's jewel tones over here, but I wasn't really feeling that either. I do have this nice strand of shell pearls here, but this, again, this color is not mirrored at all throughout this strand here. So in the necklaces that I normally see, it is a white pearl. I do have this, I believe this is like um, pretty low quality gemstone strand. And this is probably, I think from curated bead box. We could definitely use these. And I do like that crisp white color. And so we have that as an option. And we also have this dyed um, as well. So let's pull this off. And I, although I do like the blue, I think I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go with the white. And if we need to, I can incorporate some of these blue beads um, on this strand to make it to length. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to move this off because we do have a dangle that we're going to make with that. I'm going to go ahead and string this guy onto some soft flex and see what the length is because we're going to look at like a 14 inch necklace. So we're going to need each side to be at least 7 inches. And so if I pull this out, we are looking at a full 6. So we're going to need to make up at least another inch and we can do that easily by incorporating a few of those blue beads um, on this side and so we'll see how we do it but we want to look for seven inches here all right so let me go ahead and get things situated and we'll get started so you guys would have laughed because it just took me forever to find um, my bead bugs because guess what I cleaned up my craft room and those of you who are also a messy crafter know that in your mind, you have this giant like mind palace, right? And you know where things are. 
and when you clean things up uh you lose them even though that's like the whole point of cleaning things up is to know where things are <laughs> but let's go ahead and actually we can go ahead and crimp one side so let's go ahead and get those crimp tubes out i'm gonna do magic crimper and so we'll take a two by two crimp tube and this is a gold filled one by soft flex We'll take our magic crimper here and I'm going to use soft flex beading wire here in the white quartz color. And this is the one that I got in the soft flex beading kit for exotic bloom. So thank you, soft flex. Um, soft flex is such a wonderful company, you guys. Um, I truly do love um, a lot of the players in the bead community. I feel like it's one of those communities that for the most part really look out for each other and I find like I find out like I find that very rare so I'm gonna use a very small um, loop on this guy because I will rely on jump rings to kind of do the clasping and so if you haven't used the magic crimper before you just kind of want to make a little ravioli and then do small bites throughout in order to make that perfect little bead. And if you're using really good crimp tubes and you've centered your bead, you're going to be able to make a pretty decent bead. It's right there. And so we have a perfect little starting point. Now this is a very small loop. I may have made it too small, but you know, we'll get there when we get there. I'm pretty sure a jump ring can fit into that, so I'm not gonna worry about it for now. The main part is figuring out the pattern that we wanna use. And so I think we will make this the bottom, and then we'll start at the bottom here. And so I'm gonna string as is until we get to our first area where I believe we should make a change and that would be that first bead cap here, so right here. And I understand that, you know, um, this was made to kind of cup that flower, right? So let's just find another bead cap here that will kind of do the same thing, maybe not entirely. Um, we can find one right here. Let's go with the smaller one and see how this looks. I think that brings enough uh, gold in to make it doable so we're just going to keep stringing here i think it does elevate it just a little bit um, for some reason uh those those little filigrees weren't sitting right for that on that strand for me so that's kind of what we're looking at like right here let's go ahead and put on our first beautiful um butterfly this is a little bit tricky to string here you go and we'll, we'll surround it with this other green crystal here, but I think after this one, it'll be a perfect time to add our first blue bead because we are gonna need to make up for one inch. And we can always add chain, but I think if we add four of these, that'll be more than good enough. And so let's add our first one. And I think we should go ahead and mirror actually you know what i'm gonna go with a rounded bead cap for this one let's just change up the texture a little bit um because the holes are a little bit dusty dusty on here dusty and musty right um sometimes we don't use the the highest quality beads and this was definitely i think a curated bead box uh inclusion but we can make it look good by just adding a little bit of a bead cap, right? So it kind of uh, covers up the, the area of concern, uh, so to speak. And so this one, I love that crystal. I do love the addition of this bead cap. I think we'll keep her. And I love these little um, acrylic ones here. So let's keep her too. So this is what we're looking like so far. I actually do love that pop of blue. How are you feeling about the blue? So let's keep stringing. Let's pick up the pace here. We don't have all night, right? Nobody wants to see me string this all night. But I do appreciate anyone who's hanging out with me tonight. 
I truly do appreciate the community. Right, so we have surrounded this little guy with little flower beads. I think it's time for another blue bead. And again, I'm gonna use a rounded bead cap for her. And this is a super blue one here. And so let's put another rounded bead cap for her. And this is what we're looking like. It's looking great. And so we have another one of those bead caps. So let's turn a bead cap upwards in order to help kind of nestle this flower. Let's keep going with her. I do appreciate this look to be like a little bit of a mirrored strand. Okay, we got these nice little green beads here to kind of center that butterfly. Let's do this guy. And then let's add another one of those blues and see where we're at. Again, we'll go with that rounded bead cap. I love this millefleury bead. I can never say that word. My country mouth don't do all that. Millefleury, maybe? I don't know. Right. So we're getting down to the last here. And let's take a measure. Because if we're close enough to seven, we won't need to add not need to add that extra bead but if not we definitely do that and looky here we're hitting seven right on the dot a little bit actually a little bit over which is actually good because you know i used to have a thin contoured neck you know what i mean uh but age approaches and so i don't exactly have what i used to have you know we work with what we got so I'm okay with a little bit extra link. I, length. I do want it to be a little snug though. So we're going to go ahead and crimp this off. And I'll crimp it off camera just to save some time. And I'll be right back. So we've made our beautiful component here. And the only additional thing I've done is attached four millimeter jump rings on either end of the soft flex component. So I've made sure to make uh, the crimp a little bit loose so that we have some good movement with this because the opposite side is just going to be a beaded chain super simple um, and i'm going to use a beetle on uh, 20 gauge in uh, german style and the reason i'm going with german style with the beetle on uh, is because i want to use a smaller um, gauge and i want it to be a little bit sturdy so all we're going to do now, I am going to go ahead with these white beads here. And so I'm going to go ahead and work off the spool. And if you haven't seen anyone work off the spool before, I'll go ahead and demonstrate a couple links here. Um, but I do this primarily because I want to save on my wire and it's... It's all good however you want to do it. This is just how I've gotten used to doing it. Um, so I will flush cut a piece of wire here. And I definitely need some new flush cutters because holy crap, those are very dull. And so what I'm going to do, and I've done this for a while so that I kind of know where to um, bend the wire. And then I'm just going to use my round nose pliers and make a tiny loop and so what we've made is a little loop at the end of our wire I push my bead up and then I take the bead itself I hold it and I bend the wire and then I judge based off the length that I cut before just the amount that I need in order to make a loop so once I do that I take the pliers again and then I just make my simple loop at the end, I will tidy up the loops to make sure they're going in the same direction. But as you can see here, that is my first component. Let's do it again. Make sure you flush cut your wire. It's just an extra little step that gives a little air of professionalism to your work. 
Um, and if you don't mind not doing that, then definitely don't. I'm going to make that bend right there. Make a little loop. We push our bead up. We take it in our hands. We bend it. And then we judge on how long we want that to be. And you'll get the hang of it after a while. Like it, it does go by feel and you're gonna mess up a bunch. If you're a beginner, you're gonna mess up a bunch and that's okay, because it's just wire. And so here's our component. Again, we take our pliers and we make sure that they're both going the same direction. We set it aside. I'll do one more with you and then I'll let you go off into your beaded chain. I do love the luxurious feel of a beaded chain. I feel like it just moves so freely. And especially knowing that you made it by hand, it just makes it all the better. So again, we have our little piece of wire here. We're going to bend back, make our simple loop, push our bead up, bend it, and then we're going to cut. And then we're going to make that other loop on the other side. Okay, line them up. And there you go. So we have three so far and that took no time at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and beat up the rest of this chain until I get about seven inches and then we'll meet you back. All right, so that took no time at all. Um, and I have an even piece of that beaded chain here with my pearls. So what I'm gonna do is actually zoom you in and I'm actually gonna remove this jump ring. I added it prematurely going to remove the jump ring that I added to this soft lace. And then I'm going to take one side of my beaded chain here, just open her up and add her like this directly to the chain in the back. Now make sure it's the top of the chain where um, your butterflies are facing this way because this is how it's going to go around your neck. All right, so let's move on down to the clasp area. I'm going to zoom in a little bit, and there are two connection points here at the top. This is where the spring opens, down here, and it uses this little piece to be able to remove it. So we're just going to add it directly onto our necklace like this. Super easy. I'm going to use this component for this side, and then I'm going to use this jump ring for the metallic component on this side. Make sure your jump rings are closed pretty tightly. And this is what the necklace looks like so far. Now this is a complete necklace, but in my experience, what I have seen is a little dangle off the bottom of this necklace and you can actually attach it attach the um the sorry the dangle to a place where you can actually remove it as well i'm going to go ahead and attach it to an area where it can't be removed so it's going to be a permanent dangle um, but you could definitely leave it just as is to have this clasp as the focal point so I've used a couple beads from this prairie flower bead mix here to make a dangle. And what I'm gonna use is this crystal, this large crystal um, from the mix. And I didn't notice at the time when I was unboxing it, but the top of this crystal is damaged. But the way that we're gonna use it, it doesn't really matter. Um, I use this um, green cube as well from the mix. And then I brought in one of those gemstone beads as well as a rhinestone spacer and one of those um, bead caps that we used in the uh, flower mix here, or the butterfly mix, excuse me. So what we're gonna do, I'm taking a piece of that um, 20 gauge wire. I'm gonna flush cut the end. And the easiest way to make a head pin, in my opinion, is just to take your pliers. I take the very tip top, very tip top. And it helps to have these like really small Xeron prep pliers. And I just make the tiniest little bend right here. You can actually go in and use your pliers to cut if that's too long for you. But I kind of like a little bit of length on the end of the head pin. So the way that I'm going to stack this, I'm going to take that cube bead first down to the bottom. 
I'm going to take this crystal, this giant crystal here with the damaged side up. I'm going to use a crystal rondelle spacer from my own stash, and this looks to be a 10 millimeter. I'm going to nestle that with one of these blue gemstone beads, and then I'm going to cap it off with a bead cap. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my Zeron pliers here, just the littlest bit of space here, and I'm going to bend the wire over. I'm going to take my step bail making pliers, and I'm going to use the third largest um, uh, loop here, and it's going to be this one right here. So what I'm going to do is just make the loop, bend my pliers around, make sure that it's centered, as you can see here. I'm going to actually open the pliers up. Now this is an important step. You want to make sure that your necklace is already connected. All right, so your clasp will be hanging like this. What you want to do is attach the, um, the dangle in the area where the spring would be. So you can see it right here. So the spring opens like that, right? And so that's kind of the center. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna feed it on to that area and we're making sure that we're in the correct area. I'm gonna take my pliers and close that gap. And be careful, make sure that you are in the correct spot. Kind of wiggled out of um, that spot for me here. So we're in the correct spot right now. Close your pliers. Get your bent chain nose pliers. I love my bent chain nose pliers for this. I'm gonna hold it like this. And because I use such a long tail that was by design, I now have leverage to wrap this by hand. So we're gonna use the bent chain nose pliers. Right here, where it crisscrosses. And I'm gonna use my hand to do my wrap loops. All right, and so I'm gonna cut the excess off. And again, that wire can be used for a lot of different things. That's a big piece. I'll put it off to the side. I'm gonna tuck in my end here. And we should be good to go for the dangle. And here she is. This is what the dangle looks like. And it's just enough to kind of bring some of that color down to the bottom. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on a bust and I'll show you what she looks like. So definitely excuse the mess in the background, but this is what she looks like. This clasp should really hit that, um, the divot between your uh, neck and your shoulder or your clavicle, excuse me. And so that dangle will be really nice. Uh, that it's just a little bit lower than that. And so this is what she looks like. And of course there's so much visual interest on this side. And I think it just enhances it by keeping it super simple on this side. So this is our super easy project for the night. This is a definite win. This is what it looks like in the back. Very clean in the back. Yeah, this is our super simple necklace from the Jesse James bead box for April um, called Wildflowers. And so this is our first of many projects from the box. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this project. And I hope you all are staying safe and well and you're getting some good time to yourself, some relaxation time. Um, we're getting into spring now, so I hope everybody's doing well. Just let me know how you're doing in the comments. I'd love to hear from you. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.